What's up guys, Mike from Rockville, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to use and set up your RGH R45 four zone gauge hole marine receiver. Let's get to it. So laid out in front of me is a bunch of different things that come with the RGH R45, as well as an additional amplifier that we're gonna use a little later. But let's talk about the RGH R45 right now. So the first thing that comes with installing a marine receiver is getting power to it. Now wiring your marine receiver is a little different than wiring a receiver in a car, because in most cases, boats have actually two batteries that are run in series to 24 volts. So now which battery do you use on your boat? Well, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you are not using the battery that is supplying the 24 volts to the boat itself, and you're gonna be using the battery that has the ground line on it. So now we actually have two batteries set up to mimic what it would look like on a boat. The one on the left is actually the one that is supplying the 24 volts. So in this case, we're going to be using the one on the right. That is what we're getting our power to our unit over here. But let's just go into a quick overview of all the wires and outputs on the back of the unit. So starting over here, we have two RCA outputs. These ones specifically are for zone two. So this is a multi-zone receiver. It has multiple outputs to external amplifiers or any external powered speakers. These ones are attached to zone two. Right next to that, we have our cable that connects to our wired remote. Our wired remote has an extension cable. You plug that directly into this end over here. Here. Over here we have another wire harness and that's actually to get power to the unit. We have our remote line, which is this blue line over here. We have our yellow line, which is our 12 volts of constant power. That's gonna go to your power line on your battery. We have our red line, which is our accessory line. So you're gonna hook that up either to the remote or the starter of the boat. And then we have eight different outputs. These are powered outputs. So this unit itself can produce power to speakers. These are our high level outputs. So these are actually going to be powered outputs. So you would go directly from these leads right into speaker wire, right into speakers. And each color has both a striped and a non-striped version. The striped version is the negative and the non-striped version is the positive. There are four colors. There is purple, green, gray, and white. So off of these, you can power four speakers. Now moving on over here, we have some camera features that are really cool. So we have this brown wire over here and this is called camera control. You wanna wire this to your boat so that when you're in the docking position on your boat, it's going to activate your rear camera or your docking camera, which we actually have an RCA input right here. It says camera in over here and it is a single RCA. So if you have a backup camera or a docking camera, you would plug that RCA right in here. And whenever you're in the docking position on your boat, it's going to go and switch into that docking camera. Right next to it, we actually have a video in. This is more to play video from a DVD player or any external source that can output video. This is actually going to show the video on the main unit itself. This would send a video signal forward to additional screens that you might have on your ship. Right next to that, we have the RCAs for zone three. So again, it's a multi-zone unit receiver and these are the RCAs that would go directly to an external amplifier or external powered speakers. And this is just to get all the signal that's coming through here on that external amplifier or powered speakers. This is our RCA aux in. So if you're using this with aux mode, you would just get an RCA to 3.5 millimeter cable, plug that into here and then keep the cable by you so that you can plug in an input device. And then this one, this is a mono RCA. This is for our subwoofer zone. So this unit has its own subwoofer zone. This is how you would hook it up either to an external subwoofer amplifier or an external powered sub. Then we have our USB input over here. We also do include an extender USB cable so you don't have to actually go behind the unit and plug in your USB. And this works for both music and video. And this cable over here is for your antenna. The wiring on this unit is pretty straightforward. You have a black ground line, which is going to go to the negative terminal of your battery. And then you have a yellow constant 12 volt line, which is going to go to the positive terminal on your battery. You also have a red accessory wire, which is going to go to the starter on your boat. In this case, we don't have a starter, so we're wiring it directly to the 12 volt. But in your case, you're going to wire it directly to either the starter or the remote on your boat. Once you have all that wired correctly, you'll then be supplying power to your unit and you can go to turn it on, which you do just by simply clicking the power button over here. Now, since we just used the wiring harness to get power to our unit, I just want to talk about the eight additional wires that are our high level outputs. 
So this unit is capable of powering up to four additional speakers off of the high level outputs. And all you have to do is run speaker wire from your speakers and match them with the striped and non-striped colors. So the colors are purple, gray, white, and green. And these are gonna be the high level outputs that you're gonna wire to your speakers. Now in this specific case, I'm using my high level outputs with four wakeboard tower speakers, but you'll notice that I also have an additional four speakers at the top of them. And that's because this is a multi-zone receiver. Now what that means is that on top of zone one, which is my high level outputs, I have an additional two zones that I can send to an external amplifier or external powered speakers, as well as a subwoofer zone that I can then use to send signal to a subwoofer. So in this specific case, I am also running a DBM65 six channel marine amplifier, and I'm running my four top speakers off of them, and I have them separated into zone two, zone three, and all the four bottom speakers are my zone one. I also have a subwoofer under the table, which is going to be my subwoofer zone. So the way that you connect to these individual zones is zone one is all connected through the high level outputs. Zone two has RCAs that are labeled as well as zone three that has RCA outputs that are labeled. So all you would do is take your RCA cables and then run them into your external amplifier into channels one and two and channels three and four for both zones two and three. And then the subwoofer has its own mono RCA output, which is then going to be run directly into your subwoofer or subwoofer amplifier. So I could have zone one be my main area where everyone's hanging out. I can have all those speakers on zone one. I could have zone two power the speakers in the galley where everyone's sitting down to eat. And then I could have zone three be the captain's cabin where he's steering the ship. And then my subwoofer output just gives me flexibility on where I place that subwoofer so I can put it in the most optimal position for best sound listening. So having a multi-zone receiver gives you a lot of flexibility on where you can place your external speakers and amplifiers and also to control the level of those independently. Now also included with the RGH R45 is a wired remote that just gives you flexibility to control everything from the receiver from wherever you set this up. It's a very simple connection and we actually include an extension cable just so you have flexibility to put it anywhere. So all you do to connect it is you take this end, you find the wire remote, it's labeled, and you just plug it in. And then you can see I have control of my receiver. So from the remote, we can cycle through the different modes like our aux mode, our USB mode, our Bluetooth mode, and our radio mode, as well as to play pause, select the next song or previous song, and then you can also control your zones. So if I click zone one, it's gonna go to zone one and then I can change the volume of zone one. If I click zone two, it's gonna go to zone two and then I can change the volume up or down of zone two. If I click zone three, it's gonna go to zone three and then I can control the volume up and down. And then if I click in on this button, it's gonna go to the sub and I can control the level of the sub zone. And then if you just wanna control the master volume, don't click any buttons and just turn it up or down. And you can always control the zone volumes from the main unit itself just by pressing in on the jog wheel. It'll bring up the zone volumes and then you can scroll to which zone you want, click in again and change the volume just by turning the jog wheel. So you'll notice on our wiring harness, we have a USB slot. This is where you can plug in your USB stick. And this is what you can play music off of or also movies. Also included with the USB input is a USB cable extender, which just gives you a little more comfort in where you can plug in your USB so you don't have to be behind the unit. You can run this wire to right on your dash and then plug in right there. Now on top of USB inputting for video playback, we also have video inputting and video outputting through RCA cables. The video output RCA can be used to send video signal that's coming through the receiver to additional screens that you might have on your ship. This would most typically be used with a DVD player. So a lot of DVD players have a video output that would be sent then to this receiver, which could then be sent to multiple screens on your ship. But what I really want to show you is a demo of how the zones work. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my phone through Bluetooth, play some music and demonstrate the zones. So it'll come up as RGH R45 on your Bluetooth device. And the cool thing is once you're connected, it's actually going to display the name of your device so you know who is playing music. So I'm just gonna play some music and then we're gonna adjust the different levels in the zone so you can really get a feel for what this is doing. Here we go. So I'm playing music. The first thing I'm gonna do is raise the volume on zone one, which is my high level outputs to these bottom four speakers here. So on my remote, I'm gonna click zone one. Then I'm gonna bring up the volume. And here, these four speakers alone is pretty loud. up the volume of zone two, I click zone two, then I'm going to bring
bring up the level. The ear is getting much louder, so that's actually these two speakers over here. Sounds pretty good. So now if I want to bring up zone three, which is these two speakers, I click zone three, and then I bring up the volume. And it's pretty loud. And then if you want the master volume, you just wait five seconds, and then you'll have control of the master volume. Now, I want to bring up the level of the subwoofer. So remember, I click this button in, it's going to go to sub volume. Hopefully that demo just showed you how versatile this unit is. And remember, you could always take it and make it your own and integrate it into your own setup. You can use the eight speaker lead outputs from the unit itself to power four different marine speakers. You can use this zone two and zone three to go externally to an external amp, like a four channel or a six channel and power even more speakers. And then you can use the sub out to go directly to a sub external amplifier or a powered sub in general. But let's talk about some other features on the actual receiver itself. So now, now, one of the cool features about this receiver is that you get that video inputting and video outputting. Now, it's really important to note how to switch between music modes and video modes. What you have to do first is go to your USB mode, which you can do by pressing the mode button. So once you are in USB music mode, if you want to switch over to USB video mode, all you have to do is press the band button over here. And you're going to see it's going to bring up video. And a quick note about the remote is that if you want to play music, you got to hold it. And if you want to change the mode, you're going to press the mode button over here. So to play and pause music, you're going to hold this button. To change the mode, you're just going to lightly click it. Now, obviously, because this is a very smart and sophisticated receiver, you have a full-fledged menu that you can access by pressing the circle button over here. And this is just going to give you control over various settings that you might want to change to fit your specific needs. We also have an EQ button, which is actually going to pull up audio EQ settings that you can fine tune really around your setup. And right below that, we have a loudness button, which is actually going to boost the low and high end of the audio output. But if you don't want to use that and you want a flatter experience, you can press the loudness button and turn it off. And then at the very bottom of the receiver, we have our APS button as well as our mono button. The APS is for searching and scanning radio stations. And the mono button is actually going to also only work in FM mode. It's going to take your stereo signal and sum it to mono. So hopefully this video showed you how simple it is to use this item as well as set it up in your ship. But again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to our customer support tech team through phone or email. As always guys, I'm Mike from Rockville. I'll see you next time.